Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining me in the locker room today. I'm Alan Locker, real life husband and wife duo and producing partners, Michael and Janine Damien, are here today to tell us all about their new Netflix film, Irish Wish. Janine Damien is a director, producer, and award winning screenwriter. Along with Michael, they have made over 15 films. Janine directed Irish Wish, which reunites the duo, duo with Lindsay Lohan, and the film will hit Netflix tomorrow, Friday, March 15th. Michael is a producer on the film and wrote the song Wild Irish Heart, which appears in the film. Janine made her directorial debut with the Netflix smash hit Falling for Christmas, which was their first collaboration with Lindsay. Please help me welcome to the locker room, Janine and Michael Damien. Hey there. Hi. How's it going, buddy? It's going well. Good to see you. Great to meet you, Janine, and uh, congrats on the film. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you, you for having us. Yeah, My you. pleasure. Well, you, you two were just in New York City, I believe, at the Paris Theater, which is one of my favorite. Um, what was the premiere like in New York City? I know it was a rainy night from what I recall seeing. Oh, oh no, the skies parted. Yeah. It was, it was absolutely perfect. It was a stunning Sorry. evening. Um, of course, Lindsay was there in all her glorious splendor. And then we had a, a huge showing from our cast. We had a, a bunch of cast members that flew in from London. Ed Spilliers from Leading Man was there. Jane Seymour. Aisha Curry. Uh, and of course, all the Netflix execs who we love so much yeah. and love working with and are so proud to be um, a part of this film with. And um, it was a it was a really fun night. And the audience reaction was was really, really supportive and excited. And the, the energy in the room was magnificent. So. Yeah. It, you know, Alan, it's really unique to have a, a, a premiere where you have 650 fans, moviegoers in the theater versus... 650 celebrities in LA, or, <laughs> you know, where you're like, oh my gosh, this is gonna critics be critics. <laughs> hey, we love critics. critics uh, I love spent my movies. early career in movie PR at, at the Walt Disney Company in New York. So New York audiences, there's nothing yeah. like showing a film to New York audiences, really. It's, it, it, well, it, it well was, they're super enthusiastic. It was, a, it was a room full with moviegoers and rom-com fans. And so as filmmakers, I think it really gave us uh, a really nice uh, perspective on, you know, an, an organic, spontaneous reaction to the movie. We've been so close to the movie for so many years. Oh, not a year, but it's been a year, year and a half. Yeah. I don't know, a year and a half, but you know, we've seen it a gazillion times. <laughs> and, and so you, and the fact that, yeah. you know, you want to see are the jokes landing. Yeah. People are gonna, after a yeah. while we stop laughing. <laughs> Yeah, you, you start to listen for snoring. You know. you're, you're like, not that one again. <laughs> I, I, learned, I, learned, I learned a great thing from a great filmmaker, uh, Frank Capra, who did It's a Wonderful Life and many other fabulous movies. And he would go to the test screenings and he'd hide under the bleachers or in the back of the theater with a microphone and he'd record. And whenever he heard people fidgeting in their seats, he knew, I need to tighten that scene up a little bit, you know? So... We didn't hear any fidgeting. In fact, we heard a lot of cheering, and that was great. So. What what a great lesson, though. You know, but it's true though. When it, when people start fidgeting, it means they're uncomfortable, and they're or they're bored, or they're losing their attention. So, um, it is really helpful to get a chance to see it with a, with an with an audience like that. Well, tomorrow's the big day. So, for yes. those uh, tuning in right now, tell us what Irish Wish is about. Yeah, Janine, tell us what it's all about. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, we, I, we play tag team. It's like, okay, guess what? You're pitching. We're driving to the he's HOA. The, he's the on-camera person. And Janine, I'm the worst. And Janine says, she's like, okay, so honey, you think, I think you should pitch this. I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> you directed. Listen, we, you know, this is, you're, you're up to bat. Okay. All right. So here we go. Here's the bat. Swing away. So it's a story <laughs> about Maddie starring. Is um, Maddie played by Lindsay Lohan? And um, she finds that what she thinks is the love of her life, but she is too timid to tell him how she feels. So um, unfortunately, he ends up falling in love with her best friend and they get engaged to get married, um, much to Maddie's <laughs> depression. <laughs> so she and goes. Frustration. <laughs> She's devastated. So she, basically, she yeah. she puts her feelings aside. It's on a happy face, right? and and goes to their destination wedding in Ireland. 
And while she's there, she ends up making a secret wish for what she thinks is true love. And it spins her life into a direction that she never thought would be possible and in an unexpected way and not necessarily a good way, um, but a way that she learns a very important lesson. So um, it's basically a story about be careful who you wish for. Mm. What are some of your favorite rom-coms? Oh my gosh. Uh, yeah. Moonstruck, uh, Love Actually. Love Actually is a big one. Um, I, I actually really like... Um, French Kiss. Yeah, French, French Kiss. And then Addicted to Love. Addicted to Love is a great the, one. Um, the big one. And, um, that was one of the first... When Harry Met Sally. Um, Love All the Sandra <laughs> Bullock. Best friend, Best friend's Wedding. Best Friend's Wedding, Notting Hill. <laughs> just stop us, Alan. Please, let us keep going. <laughs> yes. I, Basically, you should ask all us of those. you not like. Right. <laughs> yeah, that, that's probably better. Um, this is your second movie with Lindsay. Yes. What's it like working with and directing Lindsay? Well, she is such a smart actor and puts so much thought into what role she's taking, who her audience is. Um, she comes, she comes prepared yes. every day. Um, she is really communicative about the script, really respectful about the way the script's written, especially in comedy. It's all about rhythm and when you start changing things around. And she is really great with comedy and physical comedy. She's really coordinated um, and she's really kind to the crew. So it was it was great. She takes she takes direction. She had um, she gave. Me, huge respect how Falling for Christmas was, was my directorial debut. She's still so young, but very wise and very experienced. And so um, I was honored to have the opportunity to to direct her. So Love, love that. <laughs> Thank you, my darling. And, and, I used a lot of baseball analogies, Alan. Please forgive me. <laughs> you know, that was really what I wanted to be in life, just so you know. Not, yeah, it's baseball. Not, filmmaker not a you know just a baseball player but anyway some things you know i, w I wish for it but it didn't come true <laughs> your irish wish didn't come true um, <laughs> my irish baseball wish i don't know where we would be right now feel the dreams <laughs> I, mean, I, yeah. I, mean, you know, I don't think we'd be together i'd have a fabulous know. sports bar no just kidding <laughs> that's funny yeah where where would you two be um it's true the the incredible jane seymour plays her mother I yeah. love the fact that they didn't meet until last week in New York City. Well, no, well, they met on they met on the set. I think what I think what Jane was 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 they physically they, never they, they, they never worked together in, in the same room. Oh, I see. They had yeah, met. They actually never on the they, same they set. didn't work together on, on at all. Jane was by herself it's the yeah. whole time. Except, well, except for when I played I, Lindsay on all the phone calls. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I oh, was up with your mom. And the other, so, you know. Well, actually, I think that was the day that we actually yeah. split up and Michael was shooting. Um, um, Lindsay was in the taxi yeah. outside. We were shooting that scene and then we were shooting Jane inside at the same time. Yeah, so, we, we, yeah that was fun. Um, so <laughs> she's you, you, trying to get to the, you know, to the wedding, obviously. You need the uh, footage of you playing Jane on the phone for a good social media post. <laughs> I, it, you know, I should have done that because Jane's so cute. She goes, isn't it wonderful to have an actor to be in? Because usually you have the scripty who isn't an actor. That's not their job. And she's yeah. like, oh, so wonderful to have an actor on the other end. That it was fun. fun. I, 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 <laughs> yeah, I just, uh, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed being in the same, you know, on the same set with, with Jane. And it was fun. We had a great time together. And, We've done a lot of movies together. And Michael has directed Jane in the movies. So she's kind of his news. So this is my chance to be with Jane. Yeah. So. Yeah. This is our fourth or fifth movie with Jane. She's, she's wow. Crazy. That's incredible. I just saw the short that she did, uh, the short film with Alicia Coppola, which is really beautiful. She's incredible in it, Jane. Oh, great. oh gosh. We have to see that. Yeah. She's uh, some plays somebody with Alzheimer's. Um, oh, and no. it's, it, it's powerful. Watch. Check that out. Thank you for letting us it, 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 It's powerful. Tell us about the other cast members. I don't know how to pronounce Ed's name. I heard you say it Ed earlier. Spears. It's Ed Spilliers. I love him. He's so great. He's amazing. And, you know, he has a really interesting fan base because people know him from Outlander, from Downton Abbey, Downton Abbey from the Netflix series You. 
Um, and also the Star Trek uh, series Picard. He's Picard's son. So he has he has his fans kind of cross pollinate, and they're all from different. And everybody is just as passionate about him, whatever role it is that they know him from, or the multiple roles. But he's really talented and uh, super versatile, and so wonderful. He had great chemistry with Lindsay, uh, and they were just a pleasure on the set together. I I just had to look up who he was on Downton. I knew he was on you. Wow. Now, yeah. now it, I knew I knew his 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 work. Um, and well, I do and watch. I, yeah, I guess on you and um, Outlander, he plays a, a rather nefarious character. And so he was really excited to get a chance because yeah. he's, he's a lovely person, um, you know, in real life. And so it was nice for him to get a chance to play a leading man like this. And I thought he did an amazing job. Well, absolutely. And they look pretty great together, these three. Well, then you've got Alex Lejos, who is <laughs> also from Outlander as well, but we know him from the series Versailles, oh, and he did an amazing turn on, on, on that show. Yeah. Really, really brilliant actor. And yeah, um, really yeah, he's great too. And very. this was something different for him because he played very, you know, a lot of physical comedy, which um, we don't really get a chance to see from him very much, and he's incredibly talented. That's awesome. Uh, Visario is saying, Michael, you look great in glasses. They suit you. And Janine saying, you are gorgeous. You are beautiful. Oh. <laughs> I was going to do the glass. I was going to, I did Alan, Alan glasses on, glasses on. Yeah. So I, I think he keeps asking me, but he looks well, good. Both here's ways. the thing. See, when I take the, just so you know, when I take the glasses off, right? Everything looks gorgeous. <laughs> it's just all a, it's like this smooth, soft effect. Then I put these on, and I see myself, and I go, "Holy God!" Was that? It scares me. I've got me. the gauze on my face without yeah. the gauze. <laughs> yeah, I go from the Sybil Shepherd look to you yeah. know, from Moonlight. You remember that? That's fun. <laughs> That's so funny. I was going to use that same reference, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> yes, anybody over twenty-one knows this joke. Just kidding. <laughs> I was totally going to use the Sybil reference. No, um, don't use it. Don't use it. Keep it. Uh, tell keep us it. about the new song "Irish Wild Heart" that you wrote and appears in the film. Uh, Irish Heart, yeah. Um, so he not only wrote it, but he sings it. Yes. Wow. So well, yes, of course. Um, yes. What's crazy, Alan, is that this song was written a while back and really never officially released. And so I think that, that you guys wrote it when you. Touched, when you touch base with your Irish family, my role, yeah, because because I, um, you know, my I was always talking to my dad. My dad's Irish. My mother's Italian, and so we're, we're Irish Italian. And and I knew all my Italian relatives and and, and been to Italy. We've been there many times, and so I really wanted to get in touch with the Irish side, especially. Um, I tried to do it before when my dad was alive, and then after I really, really made it a quest. And so uh, I. Fill out all the applications online and, and whammo became an Irish citizen. Uh, and so, you know, it was really fun getting my passport. And, and then we're like, okay, now we have to go to Ireland and meet relatives. Well, we went there. It was a bit of a disaster. I was like calling people, hi, I related to you. And we like click. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, can I get back to you, please? <laughs> uh, yeah. And never call me back. Anyway, I finally found our relatives over there and, you know, Seamus and Mary Frances and her family and the whole family. Oh, it's a, they're amazing. So to make a long story even longer, Alan, uh, so you know, Janine said, you know, you know, you, well, we got that song that you wrote by Irish Heart with your brother Larry and, and producer of your brother Tom and, and Larry. Uh, and so I was, I was like, I got to get back in. I re-recorded the song. We couldn't find the original masters. So we did the whole entire song, a complete, you know, re-recording great Irish players on it, great, you know, players from all over the world. I think it turned out even better because yeah. this time, because we had already, we had shot the movie and we were placing, we knew exactly where we were placing the song. Yeah, we were exactly. placing it in a pub. We were in Ireland. We were experiencing the music there. And my, yeah. Michael was able to, I think, sort of absorb what what's fresh and new today and the way, yeah. um, the, the way the vocals yeah. are. And it's the, a little more raw. A little more raw. Emotional, Look, yeah, emotional. Know, not, not as not as overproduced, but you know, live players versus a lot of you know, uh, synth and samples, and, and, and a um, personal connection to your family too. I mean, you yeah. wrote it, yeah. 
it's it's amazing. The music in the movie is fantastic. We have Michael Song, of course, plays, and um, uh, Lindsay's sister, Aliana Lowen, has two songs. She has the closing credit song and then another song in the film. And um, um, yep. And then we have some other really fantastic um, songs from Irish artists and some. David Bowie. Uh, we have David, David Bowie. Bowie. We've got some Urban Affair. Adam Ann. Yeah. <laughs> We've got, I mean, yeah, oh, no, wow. We, yeah, Netflix, yeah uh, they, they really. Uh, Netflix, uh, Netflix. They supported the vision of, you know, and, and Michael is so. Um, he has such an amazing history of music and he started in, in music and with his, you know, number one record, Rock On and all of that. When he comes on board a film, he really pays attention to what's happening. You know, is the story we're telling, and in, 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 it, it's such a multifaceted situation, especially in post. But anyway, Michael's very involved in the music, and so um, I think that everybody will really enjoy it. So, well, you're, you're, amazing, you're bringing incredible amazing. experience to that. You're bringing incredible experience to picking. Oh, stop. Yeah, don't, don't well, yeah we, he get a big head. Yeah, and you I must. Know. Music and I always do the dance. See, I've got movie. such a big head. You can see my head right there. Right and there. you must love it, though. You it must is. love that. You know, uh, picking the music and and listening to all different things to see what fits in. When, especially when it's, you know, you're not doing it for somebody else's film. You're doing it for yours. You know, for both of your. So it must, you know, really give you a a high. Well, it, it does. I think you know the, the most important thing is it's it's all about does it. Does it serve the story? And yeah, it does. It enhance the, the the moment versus pulling you out of the moment. You never want to be. You never want to be pulling an audience out of it. You want to keep them engaged at all times. So, um, you know, just you just do what feels right and 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 do what you love. And we put songs in the movie that we really love, uh, and uh, we assume people are going to love them too. We hope, uh, and but we'll know tomorrow. You know, <laughs> we'll know tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to be calling you because you said <laughs> you told me I put that Earth, Wind, and Fire song in. I was like, okay, Alan, I'm on it. You know, immediate reaction, immediate reaction. Well, I'm really sorry that you had to go on location and film in Ireland. Oh, um, uh, but you know, and we actually yeah. had sun the entire time we were there, yeah. and, and so it was just gorgeous. And it's and, and it, you know, it really is a love letter to Ireland because we have a huge, a special place in our heart for the people and the culture. And it's such a gloriously beautiful place that we wanted to really depict it as we see it. And it's, and it really is that green and it really is that beautiful. <laughs> and the people are people beautiful. Are, people are amazing. They're really funny. I yeah. love the sense of humor. I had a chance to torture them every day on the set. Bad, <laughs> bad jokes, you know, but they laughed every time, which was really, you know, it was wonderful. You know, all my Irish people. <laughs> uh, you know, we, we, we had such a good time there. It, it's on our list to get to because my husband's half Irish as well, Hungarian. Oh, oh you gotta go. Yeah, you gotta go. We, we, we really want to go. As the director, Janine, do you have a favorite locale that you filmed in? Oh, wow. You know, um, well, I would have to say the Cliffs of Moore because it is so grand and it's so much, it, it, it's, it, it has, more so much so much more impact in person than I thought it would because it photographs really well and you see these amazing photos you know online everybody knows but it's such a famous place that a lot of times when you go in person it just kind of it's not exactly what you're expecting and it was so much more so I think that probably was the biggest thrill because it's they're huge you gotta visit the cliff some more yeah and, and the drop is so far down and there's and and just the birds and the water and the yeah. sky and the sea and the, and the, you can see the green and the boats and sailboats right off. Yeah, there. It, it was really magnificent. And I, be careful because there are people picnicking right on the edge, which is you know made us very nervous. Like, oh. Yeah, they don't really have a lot <laughs> of safety like, things. It's, it's like, like you can really just wander yeah, around. Like, uh, I, <laughs> one step too far. Yeah, I'm going to hold your tablecloth. You I mean, know, we, so we saw up. somebody who was literally <laughs> his wife was holding his feet. He was literally leaning. <laughs> over the cliff and shooting with his camera at yeah. the birds' nests that were in the oh, cliffs pretty, below. Pretty wow. I was terrified. But, but anyway. don't worry, that's not in the movie. No, right? that is us <laughs> scouting. This is us <laughs> scouting to try to, you know, physically. Okay, how could we shoot it? No, no, we, we're really into keeping our people safe. Yeah. And the key is. And, and do you have an Irish crew when you're there? Yes. Yep. 
Absolutely. Well, I was Irish fruit. Irish catering, Irish everything. Irish spring soap. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> that they do not have there, by the way. So just don't <laughs> isn't, isn't, isn't that a song? Wasn't there I, a song? Do not like those Irish the Irish spring? No, we don't like those chants. We're, we're very touchy about it. <laughs> or lucky charms either. I don't eat those either. No. No. Janine, I said at the opening, your directorial debut was Falling for Christmas. What do you think you learned on that project that helped make this one a bit easier for you or, you know, all of them easier for, you know, going forward? Well, I think that any time you're doing your, your first film, there's a lot of nerves. Um, I, I, I had done so many films at, at, by Michael side and watched the best director of her all. So I Thank came you. from a phenomenal school and I had him with me the entire time. So um, so anytime that I had questions or concerns about something that I didn't know, I had this amazing support from Michael. Um, I think the biggest difference is, is that um, Lindsay and I have had a relationship going into mm -hmm. the second one. So there was already a shorthand there so that we had to learn on the first one. And, it's, and then the mm -hmm. second one, um, but you know the rest of the cast was new, and you're yeah. in a, you're in a new locale. It's a completely new story, and um, you know this is a a, a very classic rom com. It, there's, you know it takes place in the summer. It's not Christmas, um, so it's a whole new animal. And each movie is a new adventure. But you know we we're learning every time we make a movie. You know I mean I never stop mm -hmm. learning. Um, so. I don't know. I hope I learned a lot the first one and I want to do the second one. I hope that we can keep elevating every movie that we make, you know? <laughs> well, I love both, you know, your enthusiasm, both of you for filmmaking is incredible. Um, for those that don't know, will you take us back and tell us how you two met? Um, we have two different stories. All right. <laughs> Who, whose is the right one? <laughs> My short version is, I, I get on a plane, a private chartered plane that's going to the Osmond Studio Telethon for the Children's Miracle Network. It's filled with celebrities. I was invited to host and sing on the, the telethon. And I get on the plane and I see this fabulous, beautiful girl. And she's talking to one of my favorite actors on the Dukes of Hazard, Sheriff Roscoe P. Coltrane. And he's got his arm around her. And I remember walking by. I had to be cool. I was like, I love him, but she's spectacular. Roscoe's got a very hot girlfriend. And so I passed and, and I was like, I'm just going to avoid looking over again because he's probably going to you know, punch me. And then uh, later I find out from my brother that that's her dad. So uh, anyway, that's that's my that's, that's the hit, first. Hit. So hit. Okay. This is Mine my is not as dramatic. My, hers is well. My, st my story is, is that my father and I have amazing relationship and, and we're sitting like, like this and I'm excited because he's got me, you know, I'm with him on this on this fun weekend um, uh, telethon, and I look up and I see, and, and it's like literally my heart stops, and I hear <laughs> la, 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 and, and like the wind blows, and this man, I had a Diana gorgeous, Ross fan blowing my guy walks up, and, and, and I am today. completely <laughs> undone. I am just, it's like I'm stopped mid sentence, and I'm just watching him go by, and then I look at my father and I say, "Who was that?" And he says. I don't know. <laughs> and so later on, you know, and later on I see him, of course, and we're backstage with the telephone and he doesn't want to talk to me. And I'm like, oh, he was not interested. I thought for sure he was not interested at all. But anyway, eventually we talked and we found out what, what yeah. was happening. So yeah, we found out. I was like, oh, that's so that's good. I'm glad that's not your boyfriend. Okay, excellent. <laughs> so and there it is, Alan. Uh, you got the short and, story. And your favorite Dukes of Hazard. Act, you know, character. <laughs> yeah, well, we, we have a longer version, we, but if you're if you had a song the Harlequin for, version with the music, you put us on for four hours. We could probably give you the full story. <laughs> make, make it into a film. The next, yes. your viewers um, are going to be closing off right about now. <laughs> well, both of you were raised by parents who introduced you uh, to the arts at a young age. Talk That's about right. um, how important that was in shaping who both of you are today. Okay. Well, as we know, my father's an actor. My mother is a director of a ballet company. So um, I went into, I started dancing when I was two and a half because it was basically my babysitter. She, I would just go with her to the ballet school and I would just wow. stay there and take all the classes that I could. Um, but I 
also, you know, would follow my father's career and I'd help him on lines or I would sit and watch him. You know, sometimes he would rehearse <clears throat> at home, especially when he was doing theater. He and Lucy Arnaz were, you know, we had a, this, we turned the garage into sort of a, a really fabulous rehearsal space um, for him. And they'd be in there rehearsing and I would just sit there and watch and just, just the only thing that I know is the entertainment industry. So I've never really been ever thought about doing anything outside of it. Um, and so I was just introduced to, to so much art and so much appreciation for just different ways, different creative outlets. Um, so I was really blessed that way. So, yeah. And your dancing is fabulous. So I went out into a, the, a, to a, um, a career of dance first. Yeah, she does with Michael Jackson, Prince. Every yeah, year. I'm, we're going to get there. <laughs> oh, I thought we were already there. Uh, <laughs> Let's go, baby. But my parents shaped who yeah. I am and gave me the opportunities. And it was always like, you can be whatever you want. It was never, you know, oh, well, let's, you know, why don't you go and, and do something responsible or anything like that? It was like, you want to be an artist, go for it. And they were so incredibly supportive of anything um, that I wanted to do. So how fortunate am I that um, I was able to follow in my um, parents' footsteps and be make a career um, as an artist. Absolutely. Great parents. Um, and I, mine is, well, my mother was a concert pianist. Uh, I have eight brothers and sisters, all taught music at a very young age. Multiple instruments, had a family band, played for many years as a family band. I broke off, recorded a, a single called She Did It, uh, written by Eric Carmen, who we sadly just lost, and uh, was, able to, was able to perform it on American Bandstand. And Dick Clark invited me on the show. I sang it on the show, and it really kickstarted a lot. So many things because the uh, creator and producer of Young and the Restless saw, you know, saw some footage on me, and you know, because I, I didn't have an agent then, and I wasn't acting, and so and they uh, uh, called me and uh, invited me to play Danny Romilotti on Young and the Restless, and my character was a musician, a singer, which was amazing because then I was able to uh, to to you know, dive into this wonderful world of acting and continue my music uh, and release records uh, through the years on the show and do concert tours all over the world. Uh, and uh, just support your parents. Big support. My, my parents were so, uh, just so, uh, you know, backing us 150%, whatever, whatever it took. And always believed in us and never uh, doubted that we were going to, you know, go the distance and uh, just, you yeah. They're amazing. You're going the distance, that's for sure. Yeah. They just always said, you know, my dad and my mom were just always about if you start something, you have to, you have to go, you have to finish it, you have to go all the way. And you know, don't try, do <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? So that's a great, that's a great lesson. Don't, yeah, don't try it's like, I think try, like sometimes with actor, young actors or something, say, Oh, I think I'm gonna try acting. I'm like, don't just try it, you need to do it. <laughs> Go all it's, the way. A, it's hard. If you're try it out. You can try out a pair of jeans, you know, and if you don't want to buy them, switch out the jeans at the, you know. It's not an easy road, you know, no, and I think no. that um, our that our parents were, um, they knew that, and I think they also prepared us, you know, they fortified us with a lot of wisdom. Yes. Um, and, you know, my father um, fortified my sister and I um at very young age about right. the entertainment industry what to look out for you know as as young women um and um i thought that that you know today is playing a bigger hand back then people didn't want thinking about it but my father did um and so that was really helpful for me um and, you know, and you have great examples he had great success yeah mm -hmm. Uh, it's a fun industry. It's a it's a very difficult industry. But you have to stay focused. You have to stay positive. You have to believe in yourself, and you have to uh, be in denial sometimes because <laughs> you know they don't know what they're talking about. I am brilliant. You know, you have to just really, if you believe in yourself, have faith. You know, you've got to, you know, you know reach yeah. Because I mean, there is a lot of um, being turned down, and, and oh. you have to you have to be able to take that because that, that's not easy for any human being what, yeah. whatever if, you reject, if, you, if you're sensitive to re rejection then it's not the right place for you because it, it i mean right. you got well, besides moms you know it's march is women's history month 
who who are some of the women who've had a huge impact on both of you? Well, oh, we have to exclude our moms because they're the. Well, I, 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 I have my six sisters too. I was gonna say my yeah. sister. I have six you sisters. Just my answer. No, you 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 can you can my hear sister, we'll divide. Actually, you okay, it's side, well for me it's family. I mean, yeah. my sister, my my sister and my grandmother are both really amazing women. I and uh, my sister is a year older than me, and she really um, she still is. <laughs> <laughs> to each other. Well, I feel she's like done. now we've kind of she's got like, the, now she everybody thinks I'm older than her because she looks better. Now I'm six months no, older she looks better than I do, so everybody thinks that she's younger now. But anyway, um, no, I have to Wait, say- Wait, I'm going to interrupt. See, this is why I think, I mean, the humor, you crack each other up. Don't you think? It, 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 it makes it work. Oh, I, it, it, I torture her. I make her life. So I had some, okay. So I had some amazing Russian ballet yeah, teachers they're, they're, they're that were really, really tough yes, yes. and disciplinarians and demanded excellence that I think um, really shaped me as um, a person going forward into the industry because it was, um, it was really tough love. And I moved to New York on a scholarship from Mississippi and, um, these women actually, um, two of them had, um, survived a concentration camp. One had her hips broken and the other one had her feet broken. And both of them were, were um, walking with canes and they were magnificent women, magnificent teachers. And, um, I became a very strong person, um, by learning and watching them and how they handled themselves and what they expected from us as dancers and artists. Um, I think it really helped shape me um, being a, you have to be confident in what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you know, you're just, you're going to crumble. <laughs> and, you know, I mean, you have to have what it's, you have to have the stuff that, um, you know, you have to, you have to have what you need to be able to make it through. Um, you know, it's not rejection. It's just that you have to be good enough. Mm -hmm. You have to step up. You got to put in the top. Yeah, you have to step yeah. up and be better than you even think you can be. You have to be the best. Wow! That's and that's they better. share their story with you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing women. Wow. Well, Michael, I already, like I said, I, I kind of already tipped it, tipped the deck on there. I mean, I have, you know, I have six wonderful sisters and they really spoiled me and were you know just amazing and really took care of me you know growing up and I was second to the youngest and uh, just you know we we had great experiences together we traveled a lot as a band I think I mentioned we were we were the cross between the Partridge family we didn't have a cool bus like they did we had a van a 40 Connell line van it was not that attractive <laughs> My dad did paint. My dad was, was was an architect and an artist, and he painted our van this crazy, all these colors. But the problem is, is we kept getting pulled over by police because they thought it was like a hippie van, and we were like, you know, <laughs> he expected sure. smoke to come out of the door. <laughs> no, actually, we're not. Uh, so you know, we we were really, you know, I was really fortunate to have all of them. And my mom was just amazing. She's absolutely incredible. That's awesome. Yeah, so much. Janine, the last time Michael was here, he mentioned that it was a conversation he had with Christophe St. John that inspired um, and encouraged him to come home to you and say he wanted to give filmmaking a go. What do you remember about that conversation? About what he had with Christophe? Well, Christophe, I think, was the first person on Young and the Restless that yeah. decided that he wanted to make a film, that he wanted to step outside of, yeah, of was... the actor box and um, he went to Michael and talked to him. Was it to you to yeah, he to direct no, him? He, he just, you know, he, he, uh, he came, you know, came in he the dressing room. The script. And he's like, I've got a script and I'm putting together some partners. And, you know, and I was just, I found it really fascinating. And I, I was so, I love what he was doing. And I came home and I, I said, you know, Christoph is producing and, I don't even know if he was going to direct it. He might have been directing it, but I just know he's putting together a movie. He's got the script. 
it was it was a time when people when yeah. actors weren't really he's, crossing over mm-hmm. back then. You know, you kind of stayed in your lane. Yeah. He, and uh, and he was I think he was the first person, the first actor that you talked to that was really interesting. Yeah. And, like, so, and, and again, it's one of those. Well, well, you're an actor. You don't. You're not a filmmaker. Yeah, you know. It's very and it's like, well, why not? And then that's basically Michael's motto is that he's always asking those questions. He said, Why can't I? Why can't we? Why can't we try something new? Why can't we push and um, you know and elevate? So uh, yeah, Christoph was, was a he was yeah, very inspirational and uh, uh, sadly missed to this day. But yeah. but he was really uh, I, yeah. I'll never forget that day. Uh, he got me uh, thinking, and then Perfect. what was the first thing you two did? What you know after that sort of uh, spark. Yeah. That's or, or we did a short film. We did a short film uh, where we did actually. We had to. That was yeah. a, that was amazing because we had to do yeah, we, everything. Yeah. So the, we we're all the crew. <laughs> yeah. Way, exactly. <laughs> we're all the heads of department. The best, it's the best way to learn. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. You gotta. It's really. It's really important to uh, not that you want to be you know doing all these departments, but you gotta learn the different departments and you know how they all come together to make a movie. So, so that you know what yeah, what their job is at a, at a, at a at level, level. Kind of, yeah you have to really do all those things and so we made the short film and then we uh developed a series in france with the french network uh, a project called red eye that i was uh it was what, a vehicle for michael to star in yeah and then we, and we wrote it together just, we couldn't find a director and then the french production company said i think michael you should direct it because in all the meetings you keep you know he has explaining a, a strong vision everything in details and so you know <laughs> I, I didn't i didn't realize i was doing that but anyway you know it just it was kind of it was one of those organic things it just it it, it evolved that way and, and to be yeah and then uh yeah and then we just started uh then we made uh moon dance alexander princess for christmas and we did the flick of movies for fox and then yeah we just uh it's been it's been fun it, it, it seems like the two of you coming tomorrow. <laughs> tomorrow, <laughs> Mar- March fifteenth. Well, yes. last April of last year, it was announced that you signed a three-picture deal with the Motion Picture Corporation of America. Do I have it right that this is the yeah. second one? Yes. Yes. MPCA. Yeah. Brad Cravoy. Yes. CEO, producer. You know, Brad brought us one of the best comedies ever, Dumb and Dumber. So. You know, think about it. He Brad is. brought Dumb and Dumber, and now he's working with us. So, think, you know, it's really <laughs> no. I'm honored. It's the you know, greatest Brad comedy has been, ever made. He has become a very dear friend, he's but amazing. he has been an amazing yeah, mentor and has. I mean, we have us so much. Unbelievable. We really owe our career to him. Yeah, well, so what did that mean to it. sign that deal? What did that mean to have his support? To sign a three-picture deal. I mean, not everybody gets that in Hollywood. Well, it's our second one with him, by the way. We've signed. We've done two of them back to back with him. So this is the second three-picture deal. Yeah. Um, yes. It it means it means everything. Yeah. You know, I mean, to 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 know because a lot of times, I mean, you know, earlier on in our careers, when we finish the movie, everybody else is already on to the next thing. We have to go and start start another train. We've got to write something, and then we got to get you know, we've got to figure out that we're going to sell it to you know either a studio or independently finance it, and yeah. um, we don't have to you know now we've got the support of uh, you know of, of Brad and and we've had great support of Netflix and Netflix, Netflix, Netflix so has been it's so much better it frees us up artistically to just worry about you know what's the, about what the story is that we're telling as opposed to all the other business um, which is great to know and we do wear our producer hats when we're um, when we're making yeah. films because we have had to um, independently you know finance and we have had to be responsible for all of that. So um, that's been a really good boot camp for us. So we're still uh, learning, Alan. (laughs) We're going to do your show, hopefully, you know, in 10 years. (laughs) You're learning every day. Um, And we're going to like, okay, so Alan, guess what we're going to do? So now it'll be a learn. (laughs) We we learned that we don't know anything. Do you know what the third film is? Yes. Well, yes. We well, can't say. We can't say. It, but okay. Have, it's 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 exciting. It's it's fueling up on the runway. Uh, we just can't we can't uh, we can't hit the throttle yet. But soon, very soon, we'll, we'll sneak it to you. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Is, just sneak it to you. you. Have you done it, or you 
It no, 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 we it's, haven't, no, no, it's, it's, it's on the it, Actually, it's not on the runway, it's in the hangar, and the doors are closed, we have to, we gotta. No, it's, it's like in the slingshot, oh, it's, ready to go. Well, no, I mean, it's ready to go, but we can't show anybody. Who, who's, who's the pilot on this one? Who's the director? Oh, well, because Michael did the last one, we switch. So, I did, oh, yeah, I did for Christmas, Michael did Paris Christmas Waltz, I did Irish, wait, wait, we did Irish Wish first, what happened? Yeah. Anyway. First he, we did, no, no, first we did. We did. Well, <laughs> you did Falling for Christmas, and then I did. And then Irish. Then you did Paris Christmas Waltz. Now this next one is. Oh like, yeah, you did two in a row. So that's you actually did fifteen in a row before I know, that. But, okay, we're gonna have to flip a coin. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm the pilot. I'm the pilot. He, that's why it's in the hangar. He's holding. He's hiding. <laughs> I love that. You know um, though that I'm the flight see, attendant. You know though that that you know I don't do this by myself. You know that right? Neither one of you. No. Well, you gotta have, a team. You gotta Absolutely. Have somebody, I, if there's somebody who can set up your director's chair, I do that. <laughs> I was like, you know, I go, do you know how hard those are? They could pinch your fingers. I've learned how to. You know, we were gonna, we were gonna set up director's chairs for you today, but <laughs> we were trying to figure out where do we put the where, computer. How's the computer gonna get? Is it gonna uh. fall? <laughs> really pro if we're up in our director's chair. Yeah, or yeah. We got, you've got so many director's chairs. We're trying to, we're trying to. We're trying to figure out what to do with them all. <laughs> so, so a lot of the films you've done are seasonal. Why do seasonal films speak to you, and and how do you make them stand out in the swarm of other seasonal films that are in the market? When you mean seasonal, you mean holiday films? Yeah, holiday. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, I think it's pretty cool. This is basically a St. Patrick's Day movie. Yeah. So, and it's it's fitting because it's called Irish Wish. I mean, it, it's just it's it's a love letter to Ireland, uh, and it's just it's perfect timing for Netflix to release it. Uh, the other movies uh, were more Christmas have been Christmas themed that we've been talking about. We love Christmas. I mean, and, we started doing Christmas yeah. movies. The first one we wrote was because we love them. We love watching them. Yeah. And we thought, well, let's let's make one so we yeah. can watch it every year. And then it ends up that we don't ever watch ours. We watch other people's. Yeah, we don't, we don't watch our Christmas movies. Although, we love them. We love them. We though. love them. We love them. Uh, we love making them. It but... just makes you think of work, though. But exactly. Um, but we love we love Christmas movies, and it's interesting because our our hearts, are, you know, are with the rom com, like a classic rom com, and we're so exactly. excited that it's coming back. It's coming back with for the force, and I think that Lindsay is a big part of bringing yeah. it back. Um, I think people are really embracing that. Um, whereas Christmas, they're rom-coms, but they're wrapped up in a Christmas theme. And so Christmas is a really big character. It's a huge character in the film and yeah. it takes up and it, and it takes up its own space. And um, we love what it's all about. We, we just love, because we have really happy family um, memories and yeah. just the warm, fuzzy, cozy, everybody, you know, getting together and just taking a moment. And I think during, during the holidays, everybody takes that moment and decides, okay, you know what? I'm just going to be happy. Like, oh, this is a time when we can just all rejoice and just be happy with whoever whoever your tribe is, you know, and take time. And so we love to put out positive messages and um, hopefully we'd like to move people emotionally in a great way. And so, you know, holiday movies give you an opportunity to do that. Right? And so we do really love making them. But we also we, love regular rom coms as well. So. We certainly need positive messages. Yeah. Absolutely. We certainly. You know, the Academy Awards were this uh, past weekend. Yes. Um, who are some of the directors that you always like watching? You know, oh, their, oh, their oh. projects. Yeah. Christopher Nolan is just brilliant. Yeah, yeah he's, he's amazing. Yeah, Christopher Nolan. Uh, I wait. That was a great, I, I, I that was really a spectacular it's film. It's interesting. It's really fun to watch Bradley Cooper because he's an actor that yeah. directs and, and, yeah. and Michael being an actor um, and he has directed himself, but he kind of stepped out of that role because it's, so, it's just directing is so all consuming to see an actor that is able to also star in a film. That is such an enormous undertaking and he does such beautiful and meaningful work. So we love watching everything that he does. And then, you know, um, that was, that was my favorite. and then of course, 
you know, Greta Girl did, did such an original take. I, I mean, I think that everybody was so amazing. I mean, who, I who was the last one you just said? I didn't hear the name. Greta Gerwig for- Oh, for, yeah, yeah. For, it, it was such an unusual take on the story. And then um, it's- um, Who directed the- you Four things. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Your, your ghost. Your your ghost. Ghost. Yorgos. Yorgos. Yes. But and I think yes. you're not supposed to say the S. But anyway, Yorgo. he Yorgos. has such a visionary and he creates such an amazing yeah. world. I think he's. A I just watched it this cool. weekend. Wow. Did, wasn't it just stunning? I mean, I mean it's it. stunning. It's, I mean, Michael, you need to. Like, I'm going to watch it. Yeah. He, he, like, was actually, he was doing, he was shooting YNR. I was doing Yuri and Restless. And I was waiting for him. And, and, so the, and, the, and the Oscars are coming up. And I'm like, I haven't seen this yet. So, yeah. even, I mean, I, don't, I normally don't ever watch anything in the middle of the day. But anyway, I'm waiting for him to get home. And I wanted to be able to see it. So, you could take <laughs> images from that film and put them up as art in your living room. That's how unbelievable. It's unbelievably yeah, gorgeous. I've seen the vision. I've seen some of the visuals out of context. And it, it's, it's, and she really, um, I mean, the preparation that must have gone into yeah. to doing that role, and also, I I don't know, I haven't really seen a lot of them talking about it if they shot it chronologically or not, because she was her the progression of her character yeah, was yeah. so very different from scene to scene. They don't tell me anymore. Okay, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I, you guys between the two. No, of no, you, you, you. I don't need to see it. I'm just you, gonna you go need, out of you need to. the locker room and just. <laughs> We're ruining it for you. You need to yeah. see that movie. It was really, yeah. really something. Janine, okay. you mentioned, you know, right. being um, a classical dancer, heading to New York City. What was it like to study in New York at such a young age? Oh, well, my mother was my ballet teacher. So um, I already had, a, and she was an amazing teacher. And she really tried not to do any favoritism with me and she was um she was a disciplinarian but in a very loving way and um so i had a lot of um i, I had some amazing training behind me to go to new york but but i had but it was uh when i got there it was a very different it was well means the best dancers in America, and we had to. We all had to audition for our place to get into that school. So um, it was tough. It was really tough. I was, was homesick. I was homesick a lot. That was hard for her. Yeah, at fifteen years old. That yeah, was I can um, imagine. I had, to, I had to make myself get up and go to school. From, that was the hardest part. Jackson, I did not like from school. Jackson, Mississippi, <laughs> a very small town, Jackson, Mississippi, to New York City at, at fifteen. Point. Wow. It, it was. It was a really. She's. Yeah. It was really. Cool. Well, it was amazing. I went to professional children's school, so all the everybody in school was were all professionals. I mean, like Sarah, uh, Jessica uh, Parker Sarah Jessica Parker was and her, her brother, um, uh, was Pippin Valcom, Parker. Was Valcom, right? He was at the Juilliard. So my my ballet school was in the Juilliard building. So you saw so it. So Val saw Lincoln it. Center, right? Lincoln Center. Yeah, exactly. So it was amazing, but you know, um, it. It was Balanchine School, and Balanchine is so such the most amazing choreographer on the planet and, and and to be able to study at his school is such a specific art form yeah. the way um he choreographs and the way they teach their dancers so, um that it was an amazing experience and it was a, a growth experience for me I'm, I'm curious if you if if you can articulate like how do you think ballet influences you as a director oh i think that it's um discipline and also, it's interesting that I'm going to say this, but I really think that there's a lot of musicality in direction, especially in comedy. There's a lot of rhythm. <clears throat> and I think that that's really important. And there's actually choreography, you know, in, in physical comedy, there's a lot of physical movement and ways that, you know, and I like to, and, and Lindsay's mother was a dancer and Lindsay danced. And so we would talk to each other in, you know about the actual movement it's really specific you know um so i think that 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 really helped and i think just the i you know the idea of you know a ballet company is like you know a company of actors mm. and everybody and you have a lot of personalities very big personalities and are and sometimes you know sometimes they're eccentric sometimes they're moody sometimes they're whatever and i think that you learn how to de how to deal with and respect their process, everybody has a different process. Um, so I think dancers and actors 
are alike in a lot of ways. I love that. Yeah, they're yeah. they're 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 artistic, and that's what makes it so interesting because you know it's not they're not normal, <laughs> and uh, they're a bit you know superheroes. There's, there's, and that's what makes them so fascinating, right? Yeah, you, know, you want to watch people well, and that are that are extraordinary and doing incredible things, and and because that's what we love as fans, right? And I'm we're fans of of great. Sorry. Sorry, we. What I'm happened? Hi. Oh no, there was some noise, and I didn't know what it was. Uh, <laughs> no worries. There's Michael no changes to left the building. <laughs> Did you insult her? <laughs> um, when we said. left, <laughs> when we spoke in late right. October, late October, Michael, you had she just had another interview. By the way, sorry, Alan. No, just just like you know. She's like, <laughs> She's actually doing another. We're supposed to be on another interview, so she just got pulled away now. Oh, okay. <laughs> because we have a. Yeah, got yeah. A lot, we're, doing, we're doing so many different. We've been on so many shows today, starting early in the morning, and we've been running back and forth. So we apologize. We've been. Uh, oh, no worries. Know, no worries. We've been, we've been splitting up uh, the different shows. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to ask for quick. Let's just talk about me, Alan, and you. I, me, I did. So we're gonna, end, we're gonna end on on Young and the Restless. When we spoke oh, yeah. in October, yeah, it was me. really early in your return. And this week, some fans were incredibly worried um, that you were leaving. And, and you you uh, put them to rest. You put the rumor to rest. But yeah. Danny was going on tour. Well, how well, how fun kind of has it been? Like at the beginning, it was the early talk of you you know the the back and forth between. Uh, Christine and Phyllis, but now it has really been a ping pong. Um, how fun has it been watching the fans? Because the fans have been reacting to it's every move. Fun. It's been fun, especially with you know the whole the triangle with, with uh, Phyllis and Cricket, and, and and the fans have been incredibly supportive. But it's been it's been quite a journey. Sorry, there's a wind issue. Oh, okay, <laughs> a wind issue with a lemon tree and our neighbor. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. I, I, I thought you had to go do another interview. I thought you had another interview. I didn't know it was a wind no, issue. She was in the living room. I don't know how she got <laughs> in there. There was a person. Okay. In the so so the last question for Janine. We, we oh, yeah, were back. talking about oh, your, oh, your 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 performing. Good. It's a good thing you're live or not live or both. <laughs> we are live. <laughs> You've performed Prince, Michael Jackson, George Michael. Share what? Share some memories of of working with. I mean, legends. Unbelievable! Gosh, each one has their own story, and they are so spectacular. I think probably the the most life forming experience was working with Michael Jackson on Captain EO, which was directed by Francis Ford Coppola. Um, and produced by George Lucas. George Lucas yeah. created the 3D camera for yeah. it. They had a bleacher um, for their friends to come to the set with yeah. Liz Taylor and Nick Cage. And I mean, it was just a celebrity. Michael Damon was oh, there. Uh-oh, uh -oh, my battery's going down on the computer, too. <laughs> we're, we're, <laughs> Alan, anyway. this is our first interview. We've never done an interview before, so, you know, well, we do it. We learned nothing. <laughs> And you're wondering how we make movies. Hang on a second. I got to so, plug it in. No, you're, you're good. We're going to be off in two minutes. Okay. So we're so we're on the set, and we we have not we have not had a chance to rehearse with Michael yet. And he comes on and he introduces himself to all of us, and then and then literally, it's our first take is with Michael for the first time, and the music comes on, and it it's. And it, it's so loud, and it, you got and you got Francis Ford Coppola, action, and then you got Michael Jackson who goes, bah, 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 and literally rainbows in my mind shot out of him. All the dancers, like our hair blows back because of the energy, and we all messed up the first take. Like nobody remembered the choreography. We all looked at each other and said, oh, "Did you feel? Did you feel that? I've never felt that in my life. Oh my god! Oh my god! It was so amazing. It was literally. It was." It, it was like it was a physical mm. presence that shot out of him in a, the most positive way, mm. I have to say. It was a really positive experience, my personal experience. 
So anyway, I, it was. It, and it, I mean, can we talk well, about never, millions of people have seen that because of mm. it living at Disney? <laughs> yeah, I was there, Alan. I saw it being taped. Being yeah, Michael. Filmed. Michael was one of the celebrities. Yeah, yeah. I was, I none was of the, the other dancers got to the... bring a guest. I got to bring it because I had a famous one. For I was with. Uh, yeah, I was. With, I was sitting. You know, me and Liz were. They were hanging out and. <laughs> you know, and but yeah. it was it was oh, yeah. did you like that one? Yeah, it's I, amazing. Know. I think he could do better. I, I think you should tell one more take of that. It was amazing Michael got to be there to experience it because yeah. when you're that close to, yeah. to to someone like Michael Jackson, it, when you're that kind of proximity is um is just something so special and different than anything I experienced with anybody else. But oh, I love Prince that. Also, also has, has a thing as well. He's got another thing that comes flying out of him. You, you two are incredible. Thank you <laughs> so much. You got to be worried there for a second. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's terrible. I don't even know what's going on. I just tuned in. <laughs> Congratulations. Oh, no, I didn't. Everybody. Okay, Irish funny. wish. Yes, I'm, so worried about, I'm so worried about the lemon tree. <laughs> <laughs> Irish <laughs> wish okay. tomorrow. Irish 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 Irish. Netflix. Yes. Th thank you both so much. Oh, thank you for thank having you. us. Thank, thank you, you so, so much. much. This was a lot of fun. Have a great afternoon. Okay. Thanks. I'll get you some lemons, Alan. Please do. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for joining us today. I hope you enjoyed today's show. Do not forget to tune in to Irish Wish, starring Lindsay Lohan tomorrow on Netflix. And don't miss The Young and the Restless weekdays on CBS. Join me tomorrow as we celebrate Women's History Month with international award-winning writer, producer, and director, Tina Andrews. If you haven't yet subscribed to my YouTube channel, you can do so down below. Turn on the notifications for reminders of all upcoming shows. And I hope if you like today's episode, click the like button. And remember, you can stream audio versions by searching The Locker Room on your favorite streaming platform. Have a great afternoon, everybody. Please, as always, stay safe, and I'll see you tomorrow.